there will be times when you create something and you think I need more of that and you need to duplicate them. There are, there are kind of two approaches. So you can just copy everything that's on your page or your spread. You can select it, you can copy it, you can use the edit menu, edit copy, or if you're a key command person, you can do command or control C on your keyboard. But if you know that you need to duplicate it in exactly the same way, it's probably easier just to duplicate the whole page or the whole spread. In my example here, I have page six and seven selected. I have a spread selected. And so when I hit the option flyout menu, I have the option to duplicate a spread. If I only had page six selected, I would have the option to duplicate just page six. And so if you need to duplicate something, that's one way to do that. You can also drag and drop your page to the new page icon. So if you hit the new page icon, you get a new blank page. But if you click and drag page six to the new page icon, it will duplicate page six. Now, we talked a little bit about modifying page sizes, and I haven't showed you how to do that yet, but I have said it's very, very important to know the distinction between changing the page size via the document setup dialog box or changing it via the edit page size button on the pages panel. So on file document setup, it takes you back to the new document dialog box or it takes you back to um, most of the options that you had when you were creating a new document via the new document dialog box. If you were to change the page size from, in this example, letter to something else, letter to tabloid, letter to 8x10, letter to 4x6, 6x9, whatever you choose, you would be changing your document settings so every single page in your document would change from 85 by 11 to whatever you change it to. You can also add margins and bleeds at this point if you wanted to. If you change it via the edit page size button, so in the bottom of the pages panel there are three buttons. The far left button looks like a piece of paper that is both horizontal and vertical or in portrait and landscape orientation. You get a little flyout menu and you can see that there's some presets here. If you were to select in my case page 8 and change it to US business card or A5 or letter half size or legal size, you would only be changing one instance and that would be page 8. Be very careful when you're changing the size of a page using the edit page size button. It can ruin documents if you mess it up. So like if you were creating a document that's eight and a half by 11 and you said, oh gosh, it was supposed to be eight by 10. So you select all eight pages that you're working on and you choose to change the page size via the edit page size button. InDesign still thinks your document is eight and a half by 11. So when you go to print it or when you go to print booklet, you can get errors because InDesign thinks you're trying to print 8 half by 11, but in reality, all of your pages are 8 by 10 and it doesn't really know what to do. So you're only going to use the edit page size button rarely and if the file document setup dialog box will not work. An example of this is if you have a BRC, a business reply card or something inside the document that would cause it to be shorter than the rest of the pages or maybe you want to extend a page so that you have a fold out panel and you want to make it longer than the rest so it sticks out maybe you're designing tabs tabbed pages and so you need some of your pages to be longer than others and that kind of thing and so when in doubt always use file document setup to change the pages of your document and only use the edit page size button if it will not work unless you use edit page size so there are some default options when you are using the edit page size button at the bottom of the pages panel. If the defaults don't work for you, you can create your own. And so if you look at my little flyout menu, letter down are the presets and all the ones that you see above here, the canvas header, dashboard image, module number images, etc. These are custom page sizes that I created for things I was working on. You can create a custom page size by hitting the custom option at the very bottom of your pages panel you'll get the custom page size dialog box. Make sure that you give your custom page size a name and choose the size. I tend to like to make the name the size. So if I was making a three and a half by nine inch page for whatever reason, I would name it three and a half inches by nine inches, but do not forget to change the width and height because if the custom page size says it's three and a half by nine, but then you left it as eight and a half by 11, if you click on it, you're gonna get an eight and a half by 11 page. If you're creating multiple custom page sizes all at once, you can create it and hit add over and over. Or if you're just doing the one, you can just select it and then choose OK. I like to always go back and make sure that if I was trying to make page eight that custom size, 
I will double click to navigate to page 8, hit the option File Out Menu. You can see right now there is a check mark next to letter. I would want it to see it next to 8 and a quarter by 11, or I'd want to see it next to dashboard image size, and I would like to confirm that the size that I chose is the size that it accepted. You can create and separate um, spreads, and you can shuffle or not shuffle your pages. So before we talk about what it means to do what the slide is saying, let's talk about what it means to have page shuffling. Page shuffling is the process of the pages to reshuffle into your layout or into your sequence of pages if you were to drag and drop and reposition them. So if I was to drag page 8 and make it page 1, page shuffling would take page 1 and shuffle it down to page 2 and page 2 would shuffle to page 3, and 3 would shuffle and become page 4, and they would all readjust so that page one become, sorry, page 8 becomes page 1, and then everything else kind of gets in line like little soldiers. You don't always want to do that. So sometimes you want to add a page to the outside of another page. You're creating maybe a fold-out panel. And when you have a fold-out panel, if you were to drag page 8 and try to attach it to the outside of page 7, it won't attach if you're shuffling your pages. And so you can turn page shuffling off, drag and drop page 8 next to page 7, and then it would literally stay next to page 7. So to do this, if you wanted to kind of adjust and create and separate your spreads, you can turn page shuffling off by using the option File Out menu on the Pages panel. There are two options. One is allow the document pages to shuffle, and one is to allow the selected spread to shuffle. And so you can turn off shuffling on the whole document, move all your stuff around if you want, or you could just say on a very specific page or spread you want to allow that to shuffle. The last thing that I want to show you how to do um, is to kind of move your pages within the artboard. Um, we don't actually have artboards in InDesign, but um, I kind of call the outside of your page area your artboard, your experimentation area, your workspace. So this is a spread, and this spread should look like our other spreads where they're side by side. But maybe there's something on the left spread that has multiple lines of text or multiple patterns within a design that has to line up perfectly to the spacing of it needs to line up perfectly on the right hand side page but on the left hand side page that repetition pattern is lower down on the page than it is on the right hand side page and so you want to make sure that if those two designs were side by side they would cross seamlessly across the fold of the book now eventually they're going to go back together the pages are going to slide the right page is going to slide up but for whatever reason, you need to move them so that you can check to make sure all the spacing is right and that they're the same size, etc. You can use um, the pages panel, or the I'm sorry, the pages tool to activate your pages and then to move them. And it's easier to do this if you allow your document pages to shuffle first and then you work on this. But this is applied on your workspace as opposed to shuffling your pages, which is done visually on the pages panel. Okay. In the next video, we're going to jump over and actually do this in InDesign. So go ahead and open up InDesign and create a new document that has eight pages in it, and we'll go from there.